This is going to be a bonus football video for you guys this week. I know some of you just went, oh great, thanks a lot. But I want to expand upon what happens in the Eagles-Cardinals game because, frankly, I was so pissed on Sunday night, I didn't even feel like going into the game, and that wasn't really a fair analysis. And I want to go over a few more things about how I really feel about Foles and um, why I feel he's not the future here. And then I want to talk about, what the hell is that name of that team in Dallas? Oh, yeah, the Cowboys. I think they played a game last night, and we're going to talk about it. But anyway, we'll save that for the end. Um, look, this was a tough loss, and I, a, a lot of things got said to me based on the video I made when I said flat-out Foles is not the future for this Philadelphia Eagles team. And a lot of people jumped on me saying, Oh, great, you just want to bench him. You want to go with Sanchez. That makes a lot of sense. Nick Foles, you know, earned his spot this year. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Name one time that I ever said Nick Foles should be benched or that Mark Sanchez should come in and play this year. Because Nick Foles is the starter of this team this year. And other than him playing significantly more atrocious than he has been playing... He doesn't stand a chance in losing that spot. They're living by Nick Foles, and they're going to die by Nick Foles this year. Now, if he makes me eat my words, I will be the first to admit I'm wrong. But here's the thing. Nick Foles deserves to be the starting quarterback here. He deserves to finish out the year. And even if Chip Kelly drafts a quarterback, he should start next year as well because he's, he's not a big contract extension guy. He's not a guy that's going to clog the the, um, the salary cap or anything like that. Why not keep him there? He's a decent quarterback that can win games. And what people don't understand is he is not a quarterback to fully maximize the Chip Kelly style of play. Ask yourselves this. If Nick Foles was sitting in the draft or Nick Foles was, you know, a big recruit coming out of high school, do you think either, one, Chip Kelly would ever draft Nick Foles, or two, Chip Kelly would ever recruit Nick Foles if he was still coaching college ball? And goddamn, this sun just came in and it's blinding the shit out of me. Anyway. Ah, fuck. You have to be kidding yourselves, because this is not the quarterback that is the best option for a Chip Kelly style offense. And that's the thing that bugs me because I see the potential this team has. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in the Chip Kelly style of play because I see the type of numbers it gets a guy like Nick Foles. And by the way, if I hear one more person say, and I heard it all Sunday after I made my video, Nick Foles did a good job. He had 411 yards passing. If I hear that one more time, bringing up a misleading stat, 411 yards is a good quarterback day. He passed the ball 62 fucking times. That is a misleading stat. And a lot of people like to look at the yardage that, that, that Nick Foles puts up. And what you have to realize, it's a product of the Chip Kelly style of play. He's a very pass-heavy type uh, play-calling coach. 62 times Nick Foles passed the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Foles is not the guy that you want in an offense that throws the ball 62 times. Chip Kelly loves doing that. Chip Kelly wants to do that. And if you've got a quarterback that isn't good to maximizing plays like that, play calling like that, then I'm sorry. You, you got you to gotta start considering another option. You have to. And on top of that, one of the things that really bugs me the most about Nick Foles, and this is going to be the last point I'm going to bring up about him, is that he is just such a fucking pussy in the pocket. He is so afraid. Now, a lot of people are like, Nick Foles barely gets sacked. He's doing a great job not getting sacked this year. One of the main reasons why is he's such a fucking pussy when the pass rush comes on. He is constantly, constantly backpedaling 
Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, he's avoiding the sack. That's great, right? He's not taking a loss. What you're failing to realize is when he constantly back pedals when there's any sort of pressure, he's adding 5, 10, sometimes 10 plus yards on the pass attempt he's trying to make. If you do that every time you drop back in the pocket, adding 5, 10 more yards onto every pass attempt, you're making your pass attempts harder and he is not a high accuracy sniper type quarterback. Oh my god, I just... I've had enough time to see Nick Foles, and I've had enough time to see the style of game that Chip Kelly calls. And that's the thing. No one is saying Nick Foles is a terrible quarterback. I'm not saying Nick Foles is a terrible quarterback. If he stays on this team this year, this team will make the playoffs. And I said that on Sunday. People are acting like I'm saying, oh, Nick Foles is a terrible quarterback. He should be benched and kicked out of the league and everything like that. That's fucking ridiculous. He is going to be a playoff contender here. But you're kidding yourselves if you think you're going to win a Super Bowl with him this year, next year, the year after that with the Chip Kelly style of calling. Now, I'm not saying you need another Michael Vick that is an injury threat or RG3 that's just a walking injury threat that's going to, you know, tap out three or four years into his career. All I'm saying is you got to get someone that isn't an Andy Reid adopted regime child. Because Nick Foles kind of forced his hand into starting by the numbers he put up last year. And Chip Kelly's play calling helped enable him be a starter this year. He is, you got to be kidding, you got to read between the lines. This is not the quarterback that Chip Kelly wants for this team. If you see the way he winces when Nick Foles throws a touchdown, you see Nick, Chip Kelly going, oh my God, when Nick Foles throws a touchdown on the sideline. As a coach that is disappointed that he has to, has to, he has no choice, he has to play Nick Foles. But Nick Foles isn't the only reason why the Eagles are stammering and why they're barely winning games and why they're barely losing games right now. Um, optimism should still be here for this team because it's, it's, it's a good team that has a potential good future. Now, granted, I don't see that future anymore with Nick Foles. I'm just, you know, putting that in the complete caverns of my mind. But when you got guys like Huff fumbling in the red zone and you got constant, constant breakdowns, constant drive stoppages from Shady McCoy, from anyone else trying to move the ball in the red zone, you have a team that is now dead last in red zone production in the NFL. For a team and coach that prides itself on being an offensive juggernaut, that is pathetic. So, they're still winning games, though. And, you know, I might be over-embellishing things to sound as negative as I do, but the thing is, it's I know the potential's there. I know the style of play that Chip Kelly calls can win a Super Bowl. Fix a few pieces, make a few adjustments, tighten up a few things here or there. This team is not that far away. And that's what really grinds my gears, as Peter Griffin would say. You just see the few mistakes and you go, my God, we're a few mistakes, we're a few correction of mistakes away from being that viable Super Bowl contender because so many of the pieces are here right now. And it all starts with the head coach. But enough about that. How about them cowboys? <laughs> you know what? Let me just let me just put up a picture that summarizes last night's game. <laughs> oh, Jerry, 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 Jerry. Why so sad, brah? Um, I just want to make a special video, or special segment of this video, dedicated to the Dallas Cowboy fans out there that were saying things like, you know, we're not afraid of the Eagles, we're not intimidated by them, who have they beat this year? Um, that's a good point, that's a good point. The Eagles have had a few iffy victories against teams like the Jags and the Rams, but we sure as fuck beat the Redskins! Ha <laughs> ha, you guys didn't! Oh! Colt McCoy, a third-string quarterback, and one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring this up as a second-half 
to my whole Eagles Nick Foles rant is because Colt McCoy was brought in because Kirk Cousins was fucking up, was not looking like he deserved to have a spot on the team. That's funny because I heard a lot of you Eagles fans and a lot of Redskins fans telling me that when that week three game happened, that Kirk Cousins was the future of the Redskins. He busted up this Philadelphia Eagles defense. He had a tremendous day, a career day. Here we are a few games later and Kirk Cousins is benched. Why is that? I thought he was the future. Look at the numbers. Eagles fans, look at the numbers that Kirk Cousins put up against this Eagles team. Boy, were they as good as Nick Foles' best game? I would say they were. Yet this team goes ahead and benches this guy, brings in a third-string quarterback, a Browns throwaway quarterback, and they have one of the biggest upset wins of the entire season of all NFL teams. So everyone out there that wants to say, like, oh, Nick Foles has these good games, and, you know, he's, he's a young quarterback. Now, I'm not saying... This, this vindicates benching Foles and bringing in Sanchez. But I'm just showing you. Teams have these quarterbacks. And last I checked, Kirk Cousins was drafted the same year as Nick Foles. Redskins gave up on Kirk Cousins after giving him the keys to the kingdom, putting up good numbers, and then having a few shit games and saying, hey, you know what? You're not the real deal. We're trying someone else. So that's my point, is that this happens in the NFL. When you have second year, excuse me, well, they're third year quarterbacks, but really second year of playing, both Cousins and Foles. You have these second year quarterbacks come out that get benched in this league all the time. It happened with the Redskins, just as an example, last night. And you saw Colt McCoy come in and bust up a team that everyone has been talking about from the mountaintops. ESPN has basically given them the Super Bowl trophy already, but now they have shut the fuck up so fucking fast. You Dallas Cowboy fans have shut the fuck up so fucking fast. Because now, your whole season is in question. And all you Cowboys fans that are like, Oh, Romo got injured in the game, blah, blah, blah. Please. Whedon came in the game for a minor portion of the game, and the Dallas offense put up 10 points. For the majority of the game that Romo was in, Dallas put up 7 points. Shh. How about them Cowboys? Uh, uh, uh. And you know what? It's funny because a lot of the Dallas fans, even on Sunday night, were saying how crazy the Eagles fans were for quote-unquote giving up on this team, though I don't really see anyone giving up on the Eagles. I see people like me questioning Nick Foles and being a viable future component. Oh boy, a lot of you Dallas fans were up. Uh, people like my ass and a number of Eagles fans were saying, you're giving up on this team too easily. Oh, I've seen Cowboys fans screaming bloody murder after this. Now, granted, it's a big, huge loss. It's a big, pathetic loss against the dead last team that had their third-string quarterback in the game. But let's face it, Dallas could have very easily won that game. They lost that game because they abandoned the run. Straight up. They abandoned the run in the fourth and fourth quarter in overtime. When you're in overtime and the other team scores just a field goal, you're in four down for first down territory. It doesn't matter. You're going to run four downs no matter what. Because, as Shango said, you can't just punt the ball. It's going to be the game over. So punting is not an option. Why not stick with DeMarco Murray? Someone who had, had like six plus, seven plus yards on average last night. That's what like Shango was saying last night. Stick with him. Stick with him so you get downfield, get to at least field goal range, and then start considering passing. Dallas, for whatever reason, had to keep throwing to Dez. Had to keep throwing to Dez, keep throwing to Dez. Drop pass, drop pass, completion, drop pass. It just wasn't working. Was it Dez being a diva, just constantly screaming for the ball on the sideline and basically dictating what the plays are, uh, plays are run? Uh, who knows? All I know is Dallas could have, should have won that game, but they didn't! <laughs> So yeah, that, that that made me feel a bit better knowing that the Eagles weren't going to be the miserable bastard child of the NFC East this week and that the whole nation is going to be talking about them Cowboys because they fucking got Tony Romo out there in the center field, pulled his pants down, pulled his little panties down, 
and got fucked right in her pussy. And it was fucking glorious. Um, but on a side note, all seriousness, I hope Tony Rome was fine. I hope this isn't something like last year, um, ironically enough, or coincidental enough, against the Redskins last year where Tony Romo took that shot that uh, ruptured one of his discs and had had back surgery, and, but he still stayed in the game and played. I hope this isn't another one of those scenarios where we find out today he has an MRI done and he's out for the season because I want this Dallas game versus the Eagles to mean something on Thanksgiving. And uh, beating the Dallas Cowboys... Or pl just playing and not to get ahead of myself. To play the Cowboys with, with weed in the quarterback. I just, who gives a fuck? Um, and another thing to the Dallas fans. Shut the fuck up with talking to Redskins fans and saying something like, Congratulations, you won your Super Bowl. This game was your Super Bowl last night. Enjoy it while it lasts. For a team that hasn't been relevant in 20 plus years, you got some balls talking to another team about winning their Super Bowl in the regular season. Because when's the last time you guys won any sort of meaningful game other than a regular season game? Like seriously, Cowboys fans, have a bit more class than that talking down to Redskins fans. Oh, you won your Super Bowl? Shut the fuck up. Anyway, um, bonus football video out there for you guys. Ah, you all like that, right? Uh, you're all hitting thumbs down. Anyway, um, oh, man, it's just it, it, a crazy week of football. Wait till you see my review video tomorrow. Oh my God. It's just all the games I have to go over and just the insanity that was the NFL this week. This was probably, and even though my Eagles lost, this was one of the most fun viewing experiences of weekly NFL play that I've had in my life. It was just a fun week of football for a number of reasons. But we'll go over that tomorrow. Until then, I'm going to make a non-football video and make this a two for Tuesday here on the Archfiend channel. So, let me get cracking on that. Have a good day, everyone. And as always, especially at the hands of the Washington Redskins, fuck the Dallas Cowboys right in her pussy. Have a good day, guys.